Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed how to construct ray diagrams on concave mirrors and then the characteristics of the images formed by a concave mirror. What we realized for a concave mirror, unless the object is placed between the focal point and the pole, otherwise all images formed will be upside down. Sometimes they are magnified, sometimes they are diminished. And when you have the object between the focal point and the pole, the image is formed behind the mirror. It is always magnified and it's virtual. So in this lesson, we are going to discuss ray diagram on convex mirror. And what we are going to realize, all images which are formed by a convex mirror are always smaller than the object. They are behind the mirror, it means they are virtual, and they are always upright. My name is Albert, I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to construct ray diagrams on convex mirrors of objects placed at different positions in front of the mirror. And then finally, you do few examples involving construction on, of ray diagrams on convex mirrors. So irrespective of the distance of the object in front of the mirror, images formed by convex mirrors are always upright, smaller than the object and are formed between the pole and the focal point. Remember the focal point of a convex mirror, we said it's behind the mirror. Therefore, it means that image, if it's formed between the pole and the focal point, then that image is virtual. Again, uh, another property of these images which will be formed is that it is virtual. It means it's formed by when two virtual rays converge. So in this case, if you have to draw a ray diagram to represent um, an image on a convex mirror, then you have to know how to draw a representation of a mirror or of a convex mirror. And in this case, you will draw a horizontal line which will represent the principal axis. And then you will draw a vertical line which will represent the mirror or the mirror line. In this case, you will draw it at the middle here since we will have the focal point behind that mirror. So in this case, you will draw a simple up here to represent the type of mirror which you are using. Since the reflecting surface is bending outside, then this is a convex mirror. Then in this case, you have to determine the position of the focal point. In this case, this is the pole. Then for you to find the focal point, then you have, if it is two centimeters from the mirror, then you have to measure two centimeters from the mirror. If the focal length is, uh, is two centimeters, then this one will be our focal point. Focal length is two centimeters. Then if you have to determine the center of curvature, remember center, the distance from the center of curvature to the pole is called the radius of curvature. And radius of curvature is equals to two focal length. Now, if the focal length is two, therefore the center of curvature will be four. And in this case, we have to draw another two centimeters from F for us to get the center of curvature. So in this case, if you know the focal point and the center of curvature, then you can be able to form the image of any object in front of this mirror. Like in this case, if we have, for example, an object here, we have an object of this height there. Then in this case, let me draw a, a larger one for clarity purposes. If I have it here, an object which is larger like this one here, and I want to form the image of this object behind or in, in this mirror, what I will do, I will use any of the rays that we discussed. We can use the first ray, a ray parallel to the principal axis from the tip of the object. Then after reflection, this ray will appear to have come from the focal point since the focal point is virtual. So in this case, the, this ray will appear to have come from F like that. Then this ray will be reflected in this direction like that. So in that case, that is the first ray that you can use. Again, you can use another ray that is a ray from the tip of the object appearing to have come or to pass through C, all passing through C. In this case, since it is a C is virtual, then it will appear to have been passing through C. 
So in this case, in front here, it will be a complete ray since it's really coming to the mirror. Then this ray will be reflected along its own path. So in this case, this ray will be reflected along its own path like this. It will be reflected like that and back like that. So in this case, the image that will be formed will be determined by where these two rays meet or appear to meet. In this case, this is where these two rays appear to meet. And therefore, you are going to draw your image there as a dotted line because this image is not real. It's not formed on the screen and it's formed by convergency of two virtual rays. So this is the image and then this is the object. So as you can see, it agrees with our characteristics that the image is upright. The image is smaller than the object. You can see the object here is very large. The image is very small. Then it's between the pole and the focal point, and it's always there. Then this image is virtual. So let's handle a few questions on convex mirrors. The question reads, the figure below shows a ray of light incident on the convex mirror. Using a suitable construction, determine the radius of curvature of the mirror. So in this case, they want us to determine R, where the distance R, that is the radius of curvature, is the distance from the center of curvature to the uh, pole. So in this case, we have to determine the position of C on this mirror. So in this case, since we have array here, we can determine what type of ray that we have. We have an array which is a paraxial ray, array which is close to the principal axis and it's parallel to the principal axis. These rays for convex mirrors, they appear to have come or to emerge from the focal point. And if we get, if we use this ray to determine the focal point, then we can measure the, the diameter or the length of the focal point. Then if we double it, we can get the radius of curvature. Again, we can construct this one, we get the focal point, then we get the same distance, we get the center of curvature, then we measure the distance of the center of curvature to the pole, then we will get the radius of curvature. So in this case, if I can draw this ray as if it was coming from C, then we are going to consider this ray which has been reflected. We will draw it as a straight line, which is connecting to the mirror on the other side, like this here. So we will complete this ray as if it is a straight line from the other end. Now, where it touches this principal axis, that is our focal point. So now, since we know the focal point, then we can measure the distance from the pole. Remember, the pole is here. Then if we measure the distance from the pole, like in this case, let me measure this distance, then it's going to be 3 centimeter. So this one is 3 centimeter. That is the focal length is 3 centimeter. Then now, if we need the, 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 the center of curvature or the radius of curvature, then we will measure 3 other centimeters from F to the other end, or we can measure a double of this. So radius of curvature is 2F. In this case, it's going to be 6 cm from the pole. Then if now we go to the pole and measure 6 cm, then now our 6 cm will be somewhere here. So if I can extend this uh, principal axis like this, then now our center of curvature C will be there. And in this case, that will be the radius uh, of curvature, this one here, this is the radius of curvature, which is six centimeter. So here, what they wanted us to do is first to use the idea that a ray which is parallel to the principal axis for a convex mirror will appear to have emerged from F. So if we extend the ray which has been reflected so that it touches the, the, the principal axis, then where it touches the principal axis, that is the focal point, then we measure that distance to the pole, that will be the focal length. Now, if we know the focal length, we will double it or we multiply it by two, then we will get the radius of curvature and we can even indicate the position of the center of curvature on that mirror. So the second diagram, the figure shows a vertical object O placed in front of a convex mirror. C is the center of curvature of the mirror. On the same diagram, draw an appropriate rays to locate the image formed. So in this case, for us to get the the position of the image formed, then we must have F, we must have the focal point. 
and for us to get f then we can measure this distance from the pole to the center of curvature we will get the radius of curvature if we get the radius of curvature we will divide it by two we will get the focal point or the focal length the focal length then we will measure that distance from the pole that will be the focal point then now we will use any of the rays that we have just discussed to determine the position of the image which will be formed so in this case if i can measure the distance from the pole to the center of curvature in this case it is four centimeter so our r our radius of curvature is four centimeter so then for us to get f then f is, is going to be four divided by two which is two centimeter so in this case if i sign here at four and then i measure two centimeters it will be here this two centimeters where two centimeters uh, is that is the focal point now since i have i know the focal point and i know the center of curvature then in this case i can now construct any two rays to determine the position of the image that will be formed and in this case i will start with the first ray a ray from the tip parallel to the principal axis that is a paraxial ray so in this case i can draw a paraxial ray like that and this ray will appear for a convex mirror will appear to have come or to have emerged from f so in this case i will stand at f and where this ray touches the mirror then i will draw a virtual line behind this mirror like that then now when i reach where it touches the mirror this ray was really reflected to that direction so in this case that is the first ray that we can use then now we can use another ray that is a ray which appears to come from c or to pass from the chip to c it will get reflected along its own path so in this case i will place my my rule in such a way that it touches point c and the tip of the object then now i will construct a straight line in front of the mirror like that then is there will be dotted line behind the mirror to the center of curvature so in this case in front of the mirror where we have a four ray it is a, a complete ray and it should have arrows virtual rays remember they don't have an arrows because those are not real rays so in this case where these two rays meet that is the position of the image so here we have our image at this point and this image is virtual in between the pole and the focal point so the question was on the same diagram draw an appropriate trace and locate the position of the image so this is now our image and this was our object o and in this case we are done with this question so that will mark the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss magnification